on Divorce Court today. In the beginning, they were inseparable and deeply in love. Rennell nursed Natasha through a serious illness, but since her recovery, their relationship has gone toxic. Who will be the first to bail out? Natasha Batchman and Rennell Burton have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in Divorce Court starts now. Ms. Botchman, Mr. Burton, after 11 years and two, two children together, you are calling it a day. Your relationship, however, began when you say that he rescued you at a time where you really needed it. Why don't you explain to me how he rescued you? Well, I always had these syncope episodes. I used to pass out ever since I was six years old. Mm -hmm. Um, we were on a vacation, and I had another episode, and I passed out. This time, I was diagnosed with a cerebral aneurysm and a heart condition. Wow. Um, upon the surgery, I had two strokes and a seizure. Three days later, I woke up blind. Um, I was blind for eight months, and he never left my side. He took care of the kids. He cooked. He cleaned, he worked, he didn't complain about anything. And once I got back on my feet, it seemed like he became a totally different person from there. Kind of deep that you want to go now after all of that. So let, let, let me stop right there. Mr. Burton, why don't you tell me what's ending this? Because you seem like a great guy. I what, am. what, what, what's. <laughs> Well, what she's I am. What's she doing that makes you want to go? Attitude. Tell me about it. Yes. Attitude, attitude, attitude. She has an attitude with you right now. You just don't know it. I don't know. She has an attitude <laughs> problem with everybody. She frowns all the time. Give me a couple of examples of her bad attitude. Uh, just recently, I went to go get breakfast. Mm -hmm. Sausage, egg, and cheese biscuits. <laughs> She gets cheese on everything. This time, she didn't want cheese on her biscuit. Now, to make her happy, I even went back to get her a cup of water after she texted me and told me to get her a cup of water. I got out of my vehicle and went, went back into the restaurant to get her a cup of water because I didn't want the attitude. So I get home, she sees the cheese on the biscuit, we argued 30 minutes over that. She threw the biscuit and went and made her a bowl of cereal. I could have scraped the cheese off. I could have ate it. I could have fed it to the... Oh, because she could have been a grown woman and just ate it. Could have ate it. I could have fed it to the neighbor's dog. It... Give me another story of oh, I got plenty. unnecessary I got, attitude. I got plenty of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I was cutting my son's hair. She was looking for her, her phone charger. We don't use the same charger. I have my phone charger. Mm -hmm. She's going crazy, looking for a charger. I told her, give me a moment. I'm cutting hair. I'm not a barber, you know, so I'm trying. I'm taking time, I'm yeah. I'm taking time. You know, give me a minute. I'll help you look for it. That wasn't good enough. She's going, walking through the house, going off on me, and I have nothing to do with it until the police ended up coming. The police came to your when, house after when it was, she got when upset it was about said a lost and done, charger? Yes, the police I object, was there. I object. The police well, were well, there. Well, Ms. Botchman, <laughs> why don't you tell me what happened when you couldn't find your phone charger and how the police ended up there? I, okay, I don't even know what he's talking about. Oh. The phone charger? Really? The phone charger. Do you okay. remember the police showing? Oh, yeah, I remember the police oh. showing. <laughs> well, why do you think they were there? He got aggressive in his voice. He knows. Voice? Her, he knows. My Rennell, voice. Let, let's get to the truth now. You know, he's upset now that I'm interrupting him cutting hair. <laughs> so now I'm every name in the book but Natasha. But did you start out fussing? Were you mad, angry, because he wouldn't stop I cutting hair? No, I wasn't mad that he wouldn't stop cutting hair. Right, what it was is that he gives my charger to the boys for their other Gidget gadgets. And then they're like, Dad said I can use it. So I'm like, who did you give my charger to this time? I don't know. You need to figure it out. I'm doing something right now. And I'm like, okay, but my phone is about to go dead. 
You know, so Miss no, Botchman, look, look <laughs> we we could talk about the the details of the charger all day long. Oh, okay. What I want you to tell me, because and remember, mm -hmm. you wrote a petition here, you, you signed it, mm -hmm. you, you said things about yourself. Yes. Did you get angry quickly? Do you yes. go zero to a hundred like that over very small things? Yes. See, this but not over very small things. You don't and think the biscuit, uh, 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 Ms. Bodgman? Okay. You don't think the biscuit was a small thing? No, he's not telling the truth about the biscuit. No, I well, am what do you under, say oh, happened with the biscuit, Mr. Mr. Burton? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, what happened with the biscuit? See, I let him talk because, we, are, like he said, we argued about that biscuit for about 30 minutes. We rarely get to go to this this restaurant that we were going to in it they had the sausage egg and biscuits on sale and i told him i said we should go get you know sausage egg and biscuits our three-year-old just had a procedure so i wanted to hurry up and get him home because he was under an anesthesia still so i'm like just give me a sausage egg and biscuit what they have on sale hold up hold up you mean to tell me you got a kid that had a procedure under anesthesia but you found it necessary because there was a sale on some biscuits mm -hmm. to go to, to, to make a to make a stop no to we get didn't a make sausage the stop. biscuit we didn't make the stop we went home uh -huh. we went home i went home with the baby yeah so i was like i'll just eat the bowl of cereal when we got home he was like i'll go get it i was like okay which so, was nice right right very nice That's me. but when he got back, this particular restaurant, their cheese tastes funny. <laughs> so I never said anything about the cheese. The cheese was extra. He asked for cheese. He eats cheese on everything, everything he orders. Don't make, make sure you give me extra cheese and extra mayo, you know, so. So that's the part that angered you. Yes. That you believe he asked for cheese and shouldn't have. The thing that angered me the most was that he got upset that he felt that he was right, that I asked for cheese, and I didn't. And that's what angered me, it was that he feels like he's You know he's what that's right. called, Ms. Botchman? It's called a misunderstanding. Exactly. About an order exactly. of food. You had a kid that just had a procedure, mm -hmm. and you two argued 30 minutes over whether or not you told him to put cheese on mm -hmm. something. It's early in the proceedings, and I'm already frightened. <laughs> Next, how could an energy drink fuel an argument between Rennell and Natasha? Your mama warned you not to marry your mate. If she was right and divorce is your best option, call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court. Real relationships, raw emotion. Testimony continues now. Ms. Botsman, I think I know what you're saying. You think I, I've got it wrong because, yeah, you do get mad, but he's usually starting it. Right. You say he's a snapping turtle. Explain to me how, what it is he does to, to dig at you and work your nerves that makes you crazy. We have a five-year-old and a three-year-old. Mm -hmm. They're both boys, and they renegades. They get up, and the time they get up to the time they go to bed, they're hype. Right. So he sleep, and we have to tiptoe around him while he's sleeping. If I wake him up, what you want? Why don't y'all go in another room with that? You know, well, even that if it's something that he needs. I, I, I don't even feel comfortable waking him up to ask him if he needs something while I'm dropping them off at preschool because he's going to go off about it. He works, though, right, outside the home? Even he, if he isn't working. You know. He just, he's a night owl, and he likes to sleep. To sleep during the day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So you say that you two, you guys have to tiptoe around. That, to me, that's not snapping turtle. I, you know, I hurt people who wake me up because mm -hmm. my sleep is precious. Right. So, so tell me something that he does actively to cause you to become angry. Throw the you pillow, call me out my name, tell everybody to shut up real loud. One instance, he was asleep. Yeah. I didn't want to wake him up. I don't, I don't like the verbal abuse, because when he dig, he, he, he goes hard. So I said, I'm going to leave him alone. I got the kids out pretty early. I'm going to go ahead and let him rest. You know, I'm not going to mess with him. 
So I'm on my way back home. I'm like, I think he went and got the Red Bull last night. You know, he coming down the steps, just woke up. You ain't get my Red Bull. I said, I thought you went and got some, you know, yesterday. I, I drunk those. So now we're arguing because I'm... You didn't get the Red Bull. Exactly. Well, what's your version of the back? We were cause, uh, I'm it's, waiting it's on the, the big part. It's the kind of stuff people, married people fuss about a little bit. It doesn't seem that dramatic to me. Mr. Burton, do you recall the Red Bull argument? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm not that type of... <laughs> you Look at me. I'm not that type of person. Well, now you can't go by you, looks, yes, though. Yes, you can. Nah. You can with me. You can't me. roll like... Just because you're not huge don't I mean you very, can't be I a tornado. I am very sweet. <laughs> I saw in your papers that you have some concerns about an, an ex of his that knew his, was friends with his mother or something. Oh, uh, his Becky? Becky, yeah. yeah Let's talk about his, Becky. his Becky. Tell me about that, that woman. Uh, my mother-in-law, his mother, God rest in peace, um, I took care of her for a long time. She was blind and paralyzed from the waist down. You know what, what, what I find fascinating about the two of you, and we'll talk about the rest of it in a minute, is that when things get tough an extraordinary effort needs to be made by either party, you guys show up like gangbusters, but then you fall apart over biscuits and Red Bull. When Divorce Court continues, Rennell reveals a shocking secret that stuns the courtroom. Do you think that Natasha's illness put a bigger strain on Rennell than either one of them realized? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. And join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. So tell me about this woman that you believe he did inappropriate things with. I don't believe, I know. Okay, well tell me what you know. Okay. Um, when we first started just dating, hanging out, you know, she would come around and it would be like just, you know, he would introduce me to her and stuff like that and she'll come around and it was really like on a friendly type basis. You know, she knew who I was mm -hmm. and supposedly she was just friends with his mother. So I never questioned it. I, I kind of left it as is. So basically she knew her role. Mm -hmm. And he started driving his car when his car broke down and he said it was his cousin's car. Well, it's funny because the transactions with the car always went down at his mother's house and I never was there. So, someone told me, Tasha, look in the glove compartment of this car. What I find? Becky's address. So, I didn't say anything. I kept that in me and kept it mm -hmm. in me. And then, about a week later, he didn't come home. So, I did a reverse address search and I went over there. CSI. The car that he was driving was in the driveway and I knocked on the door. So she opened the door. I guess she didn't realize that it was me. Yeah. And I was like, where's Brunel? Like that. She was like, oh, 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 hold on for a second. So I grabbed the door. I'm ready to go in. She pulled it and locked the screen door on me. So mm -hmm. he calls me on the phone. This is, he calls me on the phone while I'm outside. This is the, the straw that broke the camel's back for me. He like, I think you need to go. She gonna call the police. I need to go. So you not gonna come outside? He said, well, she, you done scared her. She gonna call the police. She got a client up in her. I can't leave her. So come to find out, he pimping her. He a pimp now. <laughs> Were you really? Uh, well, actually, my car was broke down and, um... Oh, and... Mr. Burton. Were you having an illicit relationship with this individual either by engaging in or... Getting the money. Or selling her out for sexual purposes? Um, That's a yes. Will I be arrested? <laughs> wow. 
We and wasn't living together. I'm we so, wasn't living together at the time. I don't care if you were <laughs> single, never had anybody. You can't pimp out women. You can't sell women for sex. You can't objectify us that way. You can't degrade us that way. You can't make money off of uh, off the most precious. Oh my God! She was getting the money. I don't care if you were giving it to the poor. That, you know, in Panama. It doesn't matter. <laughs> that don't make you Robin Hood. Okay, but this is something that the young lady wants, wanted to do. It wasn't all my so part. If I, so, so if you ran into somebody and who wanted to sling drugs to five-year-olds, you'd go out there and no, bag it up for them? What's uh, wrong with you? No, but they can bring me some of the money, but I wouldn't go out there with them. Uh, Let me put... No, 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 no. I'm going to take a second and pull myself together. <laughs> Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. Divorce Court, Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. Ms. Botchman, you want transitional support in, to the tune of $3,000. Tell me why you believe he ought to give you that money. He's never consistent with us living together. Um, he feels as if he can come when it's bad, he leaves. Exactly. And we just purchased a home. And if things don't work out, then I'm stuck with the kids and the bills. Mr. Burton, do you want to respond to that? Um. Before I eat you alive? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't eat me alive, Judge. Without her attitude problem, we can, like, start over, like, with your permission. I mean, we can, like, start this thing all over again. And... It's just like all the bad days are behind us, and I just want to start over. It's just we've been through the we've been through the storm. So with your blessings, I would like to. Propose. Oh, I'm not gonna bless you for anything. You can rest assured on that. Let me tell you something, Mr. Burton. What you did with that other woman oh, speaks to your character. Oh it speaks to who you are. It speaks to your soul and your morality. I mean, they're, they're, women across the globe are being trafficked and sold. We are being, being uh, just, just eviscerated by your lack of value, and it's intolerable. You lost all my respect, period. Ms. Botchman, you cried when he said he was going to give you a ring. Do you want it? I do. I know he's changed tremendously. Renelle is the type that would do anything to make sure me and the kids are okay. And sometimes his logics aren't where they need to be. Both him and the side chick, as you would like to call her, were totally wrong, you know? But I feel like either I'm going to leave him or I'm going to forgive him. And I've chosen to forgive him for that. Well, then I don't know what you were doing here, and I don't know why you were bothering me if you were going to forgive him. But let me tell you something, Ms. Botchman. You know, don't let a ring and a couple of nice words allow you to determine who you're going to be with. You know, if he's really doing the things that he was doing to you and, and, you know, women are so willing to forgive, we imprint on a guy and then that's that. Don't be foolish. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, don't... And, 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 and most certainly don't bother me with it. I, I wasn't bothering you, really. I needed your 100% advice. Advice can't help you. The only thing that you need from him is for a demonstration of being a better person. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to forgive him for for that, you know, that's on you. You do whatever you got kids with and sometimes, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But don't don't take words, don't take ring. You take prolonged action. You don't you don't buy a house with a guy you're not sure about. You don't take a ring cuz it's really sweet that he did it. Mm -hmm. What you do is you make him show up and you make him show up correct and you make him do it for a considerable period of time. And then and only then should you ever make a decision about whether or not you're going to move another step forward with him. Then and only then. I'm not going to award you $3,000 because I think you're going to stay. But, uh, you know, he has to demonstrate to you that he's a better person than he was. Yeah. And he has to do so for a considerable period of time. I have. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Even though the judge advised Natasha that she should stay away from Rennell, 
they have chosen to give their relationship one last try. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.